joining us on YouTube, we have been together this first Sunday of Advent with thanksgiving in our hearts and with thanksgiving on our lips. We have thought about what we can give thanks for which money cannot buy. And that has been an interesting thing to hear what everybody has, how they have responded. So we've been sharing thoughts and now this sermon comes as a way of just kind of catching us all at the end with not such a lengthy one, although sometimes when I say I'm not going to preach long, huh, I'm not going to promise that. But nonetheless, we're surrounded here in Germany by worry, and I don't know where all of you are who are hearing this outside of the German box, but there's a lot of worry in our world right now. The Christmas markets can't remain. Those who build things up have had to take them all down. And Stuttgart has a beautiful Christmas market, so it's a loss, a loss for the city. And what remains for many of them are bad bank balances at the end of the year. One family business I read in the newspaper had invested 50,000 euros in buying just food, just food to make during the Christmas market time when they were cooking and giving it and selling it to people. 50,000 euros just for food, and that didn't mean what they had to pay for building up their huge, huge booth. And now, loss, no income. And many people in the city will face the same plight because the ease of shopping has gone down. We're supposed to not really go out much. And so there will be loss. The coronavirus has taken on a very negative dynamic right now. So is it a bit cynical to say, give thanks for what money cannot buy, since you can't go out shopping much? Or are we actually approaching this first Sunday of Advent with a healthier perspective because we're not just thinking of shopping, shopping, shopping. We read or we read this verse in 2 Corinthians 9.15 and it says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And this can give us focus during this particular Advent. Giving thanks for the gift God has given to us. And John 3.16 describes that gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only son. God gives us relationship at Christmas. God gave us his son. We can be related to him. That whoever believes in him, in this gift, in his son, has a relationship with him, will not perish or lose life, but will have eternal life. That's good news. And this indescribable gift cannot be purchased with our money. We can neither buy Advent nor Christmas with money. Now, you can buy gifts with money, but you can't buy the Christmas with it. Both of those, both Advent and Christmas, are gifts because they are brought to us in Jesus, the one who came down to be with us, to share life with us, to offer friendship to us. Jesus is a gift. And this is an amazing because we really don't expect anything from God. I mean, when we were born, when we entered the world, we didn't even know that there was a God, did we? Not as a baby, I didn't think about, I mean, most babies just want to eat and sleep and have their diaper changed. That's about it. They don't think much about the bigger things of life. But God already knows us before we know him, and has prepared this gift for us in advance of our arrival. Remember what baby showers are like, don't you? We've had some here in the church. When a woman is expecting a baby, other friends and family have a get together and give the expecting mother gifts to help supply her with the first necessity she will need when the baby is born. It's a good practice, and we've done that in the community. 
So we could say in this context that before we were even born, God had a gift ready for us. A necessity, if you will, if we wanted to truly live. He purchased the gift for us. It's free of charge from our side, although it was expensive to provide from his side. So entering Advent this year, preparing for Christmas, it is with a thankfulness for something we could never, ever purchase. Some of you have said that already. We simply don't need a sentimental waiting for baby Jesus to arrive. Richard Rohr suggests Jesus identified his own message with what he called the coming of the reign of God or the kingdom of God, whereas we have often settled for the sweet coming of a baby who asks little of us in terms of surrender, surrender, encounter, mutuality, or any studying of the scriptures or the actual teaching of Jesus. Sentimentality, defined as trumping up our emotions, can be avoiding of and a substitute for an actual relationship, as we see in our human relationships too. We don't need sentimentality at Christmas time. We need something real at Christmas time. Maybe this Advent, we are aware that we are in a different time in world history. We are in a serious moment in our world. We don't need sentimentality. We need a true relationship with someone to help get us through this time. Perhaps we need to empty ourselves deliberately of all that which pushes out the real gift of Jesus so that we have space to receive him. What might that look like during this Advent? I saw an article says, count down until the celebration. Count down to fest. And it was talking about Advent calendars, the history of Advent calendars. And in the beginning, I thought it was interesting to have children, you would have a little manger and you would lay a straw in the manger every day, a straw. And then, of course, you could count up, and at the end, you would have 24 straws in the manger ready for the baby Jesus to lay in the manger. And the first one started in 1850, but I bet you wouldn't find any straw out there today hanging in a Advent calendar. They've gone up in expectations, and they've created across the years, the article said, a profaning of Christmas. So it's only then focused on material things and not on the real meaning of the season. Hmm. If you go into stores, you can find all kinds of Advent calendars with a whole bunch of already gifts, gifts to get ready for the big gifts, gifts. Yeah, where have we landed? Maybe this Advent is the year to go back to creating a calendar which includes being awake, keeping alert, staying attentive to life, so as to get away from our demands that life should be a certain way for us, sort of like we want chocolate behind the door we open. We won't, don't want just a picture, we want the chocolate of life to always be in our calendar. Or as Richard Rohr suggests, when we demand satisfaction of one another, when we demand any completion to history on our terms, when we demand that our anxiety or any dissatisfaction be taken away, as it were, why weren't you this for me? Or why didn't you do that for me? We are refusing to say, Come, Lord Jesus. We are refusing to hold out for the full picture that is always given by God. Perhaps this Advent, I'm challenging all of us 
we can sing and pray more clearly, come Lord Jesus, and then wait expectantly for what he wants to give to us in our living. For Jesus comes like he did in the past, so he will in the future, in our private lives as well as in our suffering world, Jesus comes. So when we sing this Advent, come Lord Jesus, this is a powerful hope for the world, for our private world, and for the world at large. May we truly pray that this year, come Lord Jesus, Come. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.